All right, what about service times? Well, there is a movement right now uh, that people are trying to go back to the Sabbath day and trying to think that that makes them more holy. Uh, no, uh, don't return to the Sabbath day. You don't have to, you know, Friday to Saturday or whatever and worship on Saturdays. Don't worry about that. Uh, the early Christians met on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Um, it's not a pagan thing. You know, the Seventh-day Seventh Adventists get all nutty about that. Um, you should meet on the first day of the week. Of course, if persecution comes, if things get very bad, you can mix up the days. The Lord's not going to get upset about that. Uh, certainly, you don't have to meet on Sunday, but you don't have to meet on the Sabbath day either. Don't, don't fall for that thing. Uh, we basically meet from 9 o'clock Sunday morning till 12 o'clock uh, in the afternoon there. And basically we start out with prayer requests. We come together, everybody's there, sit down, okay, do we have any prayer requests or praises? And we go around the room, people say what's going on, or I met somebody yesterday, witnessed to them, whatever. And then we have somebody prays, one of the men will pray. After that, we have a hymn, and we sing all the verses of the hymn. I'm going to talk about hymns in just a little bit and music. And then we have preaching after the hymn, and that's usually 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes it goes over an hour if it's a big subject, but we usually try to keep it right around that time period, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, then a lot of times we'll have another hymn after the preaching is over. After that is finished, uh, sometimes we'll have prayer again, or a lot of times we just get right into the next thing, which is fellowship. Okay, Part of the idea of church is to come together and encourage each other and exhort each other. And you need to have some time of fellowship. And, of course, if there's any business type of things, we need more tracks, or what do you think about trying out this, or why don't we go to this neighborhood and conduct an outreach, at that point, you can talk about those things. And it's also a good time to talk about and discuss the sermon. If people have questions, if they say, well, you said this in the, in the message there. What about this? What about that? What about this verse? And we can discuss things like that. Also, you can bring up other subjects at that time, that time of fellowship. You can bring up other subjects. You can say, hey, I was reading the Bible and this week in my private daily devotions, and I came across this verse. What do you think it means? So it's a good time of fellowship at that point. You say, well, yeah, but brother, you've got to have a Sunday evening service. Well, that's up to you. That's optional. If you feel that you want to have a Sunday evening service as part of your house church, okay, go ahead. You know. But again, where's it at in the Bible? It's not in there. So it's not a sin to have a Sunday evening service, and it's not a sin to not have a Sunday evening service. Okay? totally optional, that's your decision. Okay, if you want to have one, go for it. Um, now, during the week, it's also good to meet. I, again, not there's no Wednesday evening prayer meeting in the Bible. You're not going to find it in there, but it's not a sin. Okay, I'm not trying to say it's a sin, but I do think it's good to have a weekly, a weeknight meeting time where you can get together for prayer and for Bible study. Okay, and uh, ours is on Thursday nights. just works out better for us. We have other things going Wednesday night. And again, it frees up Wednesday nights. Members of our house church want to go visit a church and visit their prayer meeting. By all means, go ahead. Uh, Saturday morning, people have different times for, for ministry, outreach, door-to-door, -door evangelism. But basically, we meet Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock. Again, it's not... You're not required to go out. It's strongly encouraged. We do like people to go out door-to-door, uh, -door, or sometimes we'll go street preaching. Haven't done it in a while, actually, but tracting is another, th another thing. But then again, we're all really involved in different ministries, and I'm going to get into ministry later, so I'm not going to cover that much more. But your services can be somewhat flexible, but you should be on somewhat of a schedule. Okay, flexibility in services for house churches can really, really comes into play when you start getting persecuted. You need to be a little bit more flexible. Right now, we're not really being persecuted in America, not yet. 
Uh, so I would suggest simply just, just keep it, you know, Sunday morning, Wednesday or Thursday evening, Saturday morning. That's the way we do it. Works out pretty good. Gets you on a schedule so you know how to plan your week. Okay, next section. How to dress. How do you dress at a house church? Um, most of your conservative churches, you come dressed in a suit and tie. You know, I got my nice shirt on here and a tie for the video. Um, should you come in a suit and tie and, and your wife in a fancy dress and your kids dressed up? Well, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. But again, search the scriptures. Where's it at? It's not in there. In fact, that if you really want to study it, the, the practice of Sunday best really doesn't go back more than a few hundred years. It's not really something that's been around that long. I'm not against it. Don't get excited. Don't don't you know get mad at me because I'm I'm trying to be liberal or something. I'm not. And in fact, I want to warn about that because you'll see the house church thing. A lot of times, people meeting in t-shirts and shorts and with sandals on or something and sitting around drinking iced tea. That's wrong. I don't agree with that. Uh, the Bible does teach modest apparel. Okay, you should dress modestly. Uh, Galatians 5.13 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. How is it going to help other people if you come and you're dressed inappropriately? See, you should dress modestly. Generally, the men at our house church will wear nice pants and a some kind of a shirt that's nice, has design on it or whatever. We don't wear t-shirts. Uh, we don't wear shorts and sandals, things like that. We don't wear suits and ties, um, but certainly if somebody wanted to come like that, they wouldn't feel out of place. We do dress up a little bit nicer. The women are at our house church wear skirts or dresses. Uh, there again, we're not you know, to have women come in dressed in, in short shorts or tight clothing, it's going to be a problem, okay? Yes, we're redeemed. Yes, we're saved. Yes, we have the Holy Ghost living within us. But we also have flesh, too. And our flesh is prone to sin, okay? And a woman coming, dressing inappropriately, even though you're all saved and everything, it still can make problems. So my, my recommendation is dress modestly. Dress in a way that you don't bring attention to yourself. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now that doesn't mean that women have to come, you know, with no makeup and dressed in a burlap sack with, two holes, you know, for your arms and one hole for your head and, and your hair not washed or something. No, you don't have to make yourself look ugly. But the point is, you should come in a way that you're not going to make people greedy and, and desire the things that you have, make them feel bad because they don't have the gold or the pearls or costly array. Dress modestly. Dress simply. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, the atmosphere. If you dress inappropriately, the atmosphere is going to be bad. Um, if you dress modestly, in a way that you aren't bringing attention to yourself, you're not wearing bright, tight clothing or something like that, you dress modestly, the atmosphere will be more reverent. And the Bible does teach that. Uh, you should be serious at your house church, okay? It's not a free-for-all. It's not some kind of comedy central or whatever. Uh, but then again, don't go overboard. Don't make it cold and, and rigid and formalistic or something. No, you can laugh, you can smile. We do at our church. But there is a sense of godly fear and reverence there as well. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, 28, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 
you see the verse there is just trying to t tell you it's not so not trying to force you into being just dead and and not having any joy and not having anything to laugh about or smile about that's not what it's trying to say there it's just saying that there's to be some respect okay keep that in mind um, another thing here another good verse about the assembling of the saints Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching now it's kind of funny because when you start a house church this is going to be one of the verses that friends and family that go to big churches you know they'll use this against you and they'll say but the Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together where is there a church building in that verse it's not in there but see again they make the word of God of none effect by their tradition like Jesus warned about uh, that verse is just simply saying that you are to assemble yourselves together why to exhort one another that's what it's about that's why you come together to help each other somebody had a bad week they failed they they messed up miserably they sinned you exhort them you encourage them you give them scriptures you say hey you know brother sister the Bible says and you give them a scripture Romans 8 28 wonderful scripture to use to exhort people okay somebody goes through something very bad you say hey you know the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God to them which are the called according to his purpose that's exhorting one another that's the one of the main purposes of coming together to study the scriptures to prepare for going out to evangelize the lost and to exhort one another fellowship among the body of Christ that's what it's about okay but don't fall for the thing where people try to use Hebrews 10 25 that you're somehow wrong for having a house church not a good argument but let's move on to the next section